Today, we're gonna to be making some hot sauce. Today's sauce is perfect for early summer. It is a green sauce, very fragrant, very fresh tasting. First thing we need to do is get out to the greenhouses and go pick us some chilies. By picking them, you're allowing the plant to focus a little bit more of its energy on actually growing, getting bigger root system, and also just getting much bigger foliage. Right now, a lot of the energy is going into the plant trying to ripen these chilies. Man, we've got a lot of this one plant. Have a look at that. Got a bunch more on the one next to it. <laughs> Lovely and easy to pick up, pick off as well. But this will definitely encourage the plant to grow bigger and we'll get another harvest of these very soon. Uh, if you pull up against the direction that they're growing, then they snap off quite easily, like you can see here. Don't try and pull down on it, you'll end up breaking the stem. But if you pick up, then you can see how easy that is and you don't damage your plant. Now, the Kashmiri merch tastes great when they're green, but they do not have a lot of spice. So we need something like some jalapenos, some green jalapenos or some serranos like we have over here to add a bit of spice to it. The type of sauce this is, the balance is really good when you have a bit of a bite, but not too much. And uh, yeah, it is a delicious sauce. I want to give them a good rinse and get rid of all these little flower ends at the end of the chilies. You don't want that in your sauce. I would say we have probably a third are the spicier peppers. So the jalapeno, the bird's eye, uh, the peri peri, as well as the serrano. And they'll add a nice spice to this. The rest are Kashmiri merch. So we have 530 grams of chilies. This is gonna be a very fresh tasting sauce, so all the ingredients are gonna really add to that. The first one is the limes. We also have some beautiful ginger. So that's 84 grams, and I'll put the ounces up on the screen as well. I absolutely love garlic. We're gonna be using a whole bulb of garlic for this amount of chilies. One white onion. This is gonna add a nice, sharp sort of taste onion, just really helps out with these fresh type of uh, sauces. I wouldn't go with the red onions or the milder onions. I know my wife prefers a red onion because she doesn't like how sharp these are. But this sauce, we're going for a bright green color. So if you go with the red one, it's gonna dull the color a little bit. To help with that green color, we are gonna be adding in coriander. Now this isn't just for the color. Coriander is also such a fresh tasting herb. I love coriander and you can't really go wrong with how much you wanna add. Just don't go with too little. We might add a bit of sugar to this. It just depends on these chilies. There, There is a little bit of sweetness to some of these chilies, but not a lot because they aren't ripe. And uh, we'll figure that out at the end of the sauce. Good idea, even though we're gonna blending the uh, garlic, give it a bit of a crush. I mean, ideally, if I wasn't being lazy today, I would actually crush them up properly uh, with a garlic crusher. But if you just do this, not only does it help get the skin off, but also it just crushes it out, gets a bit more of that flavor coming through. One of you guys actually showed me a trick with peeling ginger. Uh, I've always sliced off the skin and uh, somebody in the comments said well, let's use the spoon and man it just works so much easier and far less waste. The last thing we need to add are the actual chilies and we've already cleaned them so all we need to do now is take off the stalk and that's just popped off like that. Uh, thankfully I have a blender that will manage this no problem so I can put them in whole but you could cut them up into smaller pieces if you want. 
By the way, if you're interested in getting a Chili Chump branded apron, I have them available in my shop. That's chilichump.com forward slash shop. And uh, it really helps the channel out if you go and buy something like that from me. Let's see how this goes. I haven't used this very much. This is my new Vitamix that I bought. Uh, I bought this because I needed it for my small batch sauces that I make. I have a much bigger blender for the ones I use for my shop. But when I'm experimenting or when I'm making these small sauces like this for myself and friends and family, then this is just perfect. And yeah, I was uh, abusing my old Ninja blender, which is still a great blender, don't get me wrong, but this is not meant for the sort of volume of stuff I was putting through it. Let's see how we've done so far. It's looking good. Uh, the first note you get there is definitely the coriander. Um, then the spice hits the back of your throat. It's not overwhelmingly um, spicy. Some of these flavors in here are quite delicate. And if you use super hot things like that in here, then you kind of overwhelm that flavor and it'll really knock the balance out. Let's give it a taste and see if we need to adjust anything. Besides the fact that there's a good amount of heat there, nice spice, perfect amount of spice. Um, there is a core ingredient that's missing and I'm sure you've been screaming at your screen telling me to uh, get some salt in here. It's definitely missing salt. I forgot that in the beginning part. We're going to be adding in two tablespoons of sugar. If you are going to use an artificial sugar, make sure that you use one that can be heated because the next step of this is going to be heating. So what we're doing here is we're just boiling out a little bit of the water because what we're going to be doing is adding in some vinegar right at the end and we don't want it to be too watery. And as it is, it's not, it's not too bad, but we definitely want to get a little bit of this water out. Once you've simmered it down for about five to ten minutes, uh, you want a texture that's kind of like that. Um, five or ten minutes, that will just release quite a bit of the moisture, and then we're ready for the next bit. But first, you're going to need to let this cool down because blending things when they're really hot can be a problem. Uh, the color has gone a little darker, but. That's not really a problem. It would be nice to have a bright, bright green, but I think this still looks good. The final step of the process is vinegar. Now, vinegar is going to help just preserve this. It's going to keep the color as it is. It helps avoid a little bit of the oxidation that's going to happen naturally. But it also is going to make it a shelf-stable sauce. And most importantly, it adds a great flavor. The vinegar you use is very important. I'm using apple cider vinegar. You want a cup of apple cider vinegar for about half a kilogram of overall ingredients. So we're gonna do one and a third cups for the amount of ingredients. The smells are amazing. It just smells so fresh. The uh, coriander is definitely the overwhelming smell. Um, and then the vinegar is obviously coming out there as well. But beautiful, beautiful smelling and uh, time to taste. Let's get a decent sized spoon there. Beautiful flavor, wow. So fresh, <clears throat> the heat definitely builds after <laughs> you've got that initial beautiful taste. Um, oh, decent amount of heat, not bad. It's not bad, listen, it's not gonna blow your head off, but oh, it's building a bit. It's definitely the, uh, the bird's eye, the bird's eye peppers definitely are a builder, but oh, just a stunning balance there, and I'm sure you're gonna love making this. 
I'm going to be bottling some of this now to send out to some of my family and friends. I'm not going to be selling the sauce because it's only a small batch. I have got other sauces in my shop if you want to go check that out. Um, there will be a lot more stock and a lot more new sauces coming very soon. But for the moment there are a few in there. So that's chilichunk.com forward slash shop. But because I'm going to be bottling this uh, and it's just good practice anyway, I'm going to test the pH of it, make sure that it's safe. I'm guessing this is going to be around about 3, 3.2 pH and uh, that'll be absolutely perfect. You want below 4, uh, 4.6 strictly speaking, but below 4 is a safe bet. Make sure that you calibrate your pH meter before you use it. So I have calibrated this two point calibration, which is perfectly fine. and. Uh, just gonna test this out so let's have a look what do we have there yeah that's well below three um, we're gonna settle on 2.7 or 2.8 so hopefully you can see that in the camera I'm not sure I'll try and angle it but yeah that's 2.7 so if you're following my recipe and using the ingredients that I've showed you then uh, you're gonna be perfectly fine perfectly safe with a very low pH. pH isn't the only thing you need to check when you're making sure that something's safe. You want to also make sure that anything that's touched the sauce and anything that's gonna be bottled in is also safe. So because I'm using glass bottles, it's very easy to sterilize, but we also need to sanitize it because I sterilized this a little while ago. Now to sanitize, all I use is star sand. I've already pre-mixed this. And again, it makes it easy if you do pre-mix this, but just make sure that you test that the pH on this is still very low. Star Sand is a sanitizer that uses phosphoric acid as its core ingredient. And the whole point of it is that it's a very low pH and that's what helps keep things sanitized. So we've sterilized, we're gonna sanitize now and uh, that'll help keep things safe. This is just a lovely little contraption bottle rinser, but essentially that just gets inside there any lids that you're going to use, throw that in there. We're also going to do some bigger bottles here. This here is the funnel I'm going to use. It has already been sterilized. I'm going to give it a quick spray with my star sand just to make sure that it's nicely sanitized. And uh, yeah, this funnel, it's the best bottling funnel I've ever used. Uh, you would have seen me using it in a few videos now, but when I'm doing small batches like this, it's just amazing. Basically, when you put this in here, it has little grooves on the side here that allows air to come out. So while it's filling, it makes this pour in a lot better. Also, it's adjustable, so you can take off if you want smaller bits. It comes off in three parts, also very easy to clean. I realized while I was making this sauce today, and I've made this sauce plenty of times, that I've never given it a name. And I've just thought of the perfect name for it, the Green Mamba. So there you go, the Green Mamba. I hope that you go and try this out. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna love this recipe. It is one that I really enjoy making. It's a great use of your early season chilies that you need to pick off because you wanna stimulate the growth of your plant. So it's perfect use for that. But if you aren't growing chilies, then you can get green chilies at the supermarket. Uh, try and stick to a combination of things like jalapeno, serrano, um, bird's eye, and try and mix in some maybe green bell peppers if you can't get hold of cashmere merch. Uh, bell peppers would be a good substitute for that uh, as the filler. You don't want just bird's eye chilies in there or just jalapeno. You really want some bulk in there and a bit more flavor from those chilies. So. Give this a try. Let me know in the comments below what you think of the sauce. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you're going to love it just as much as I do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, stay spicy.